So in the last two, because A is parallel to B and B is also parallel to C, then we know that A is parallel to C. And that's because if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are also parallel. And the last one, if BE is a bisector, yeah, what can we conclude? Yes, angle one is congruent to angle two because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. So take a moment and read your first proof for this note or these notes. All right, the proof. We're told that angle one, so our first step is to always write the givens. So angle one is congruent to angle three and CE bisects angle DCB. So I know that angle one is congruent to angle three and that's not one of our angle pairs. We're trying to prove that CE is parallel to AB. And because that's not an alternate interior, alternate exterior corresponding, we need to find one of those angle pairs um, to be congruent or same side interior to be supplementary. So let's look at the bisector part. If CE bisects DCB, what's true about angle three and angle four? They're congruent. So number two is angle three is congruent to angle four because the reason we just wrote on the previous page an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now let's take a look at these two statements. If one is congruent to three and three is congruent to four what do we know to be true by using substitution? One is congruent to four. So angle one is congruent to angle four by the substitution property. And is that one of our angle pairs? Yeah, what is the name of that angle pair? So now we're done. All right, we've now proven it, but we don't want to draw the arrow. We now know that CE is parallel to AB. And that's because if two lines cut by a transversal form congruent, what's the name of those angles? alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding. One and four are corresponding. Then they are parallel. We're done. The next four, this is really short for the next uh, five boxes, I think. It all has to do with perpendicularity. So if we look at the first one, it says if angle BAC is a right angle, if you're told you have a right angle in a picture, you can conclude the two rays are perpendicular. So that means ray AB is perpendicular to ray AC. I'm going to move straight down. If line G and H form a linear pair of congruent angles, where if they're congruent, they must both be 90, so therefore the lines are perpendicular. In the next one, if I'm told they're perpendicular, then all four angles are right angles. In the next one, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, so what it's saying is, is if L 
is perpendicular to m, then what's true? And these two lines are parallel. Alec? It, there's another right angle formed where? Yes. So if two lines are parallel and you have a line that's perpendicular to one of the two, it's also perpendicular to the other. So then it is perpendicular to the other line. And then last, if two parallel lines or if two lines are perpendicular to the same line. So these M and N are both perpendicular to P, then that means the lines are parallel to each other. So number five and six are just algebra questions. So we should be able to go through those quickly and then finish with the construction. So using the algebra, it says that AB is parallel to CD, so I'm going to mark it. EF is the transversal and EF is perpendicular to AB. Well, if the lines are parallel, that means it's also perpendicular to the other line. And if this is 90, the supplement's 90. So I know that 5x plus 4y equals 90. And we also know that this supplement is also 90. So 6y equals 90. These are two equations, but one of them has one variable. So we don't need to solve a system. Divide 90 by 60 and y is 15. Plug in the 15 for y. We have 5x plus, and we know the product of 60. Good. So we would subtract the 60 and 5x equals 30. Divide by 5 and x is 6. So how do we solve the next one? And then we'll finish with the construction. So find the value of x and y. We're told that this line here is perpendicular to this line. And this line is also perpendicular. So we must know that this line is parallel. Because if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they're parallel. Well, if these two lines are parallel and I look at this transversal, I'm going to slide this up to its corresponding angle. And then I'm also going to um, slide the x plus y over to its corresponding angle. So from one equation, I'm going to use vertical angles. So I know that x plus y is equal to 2y. Subtract y, and I know that x equals y. The other equation, I'm going to use the linear pair. So that equation is x plus 2y equals 180. And since x equals y up here, I'm going to replace the x with the y to get 3y equals 180. Divide by 3 and y is 60. Now we already know that x equals y, but you're never supposed to use an equation that you derived from another. So I'm going to go back to the original, which is x plus y equals 2y. So 120 minus the 60, I can show that x is 60. We know that based on this one, but you never want to use an equation that you derived. You always want to use an original. No, it's just if you made an error, you could potentially make another one. But to do the construction, okay, we use the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, so we're going to use congruent angles to do it. So I'm going to make note here that we're going to use corresponding angles. And we need to draw a transversal. So it says to construct a line CD through this point P that's parallel to AB. So the first thing you want to do is take your ruler. So I'm going to take the straight line tool. And you're going to draw a line 
that goes through P and intersects AB. There's your transversal. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, and I'm going to copy this angle right here. I'm going to take that away. I don't want you to draw that. I'm going to copy that angle up here at P. Okay, so to do that, you take your compass and you draw an arc at this vertex. Okay, so we're going to draw an arc so that it intersects both. And I got to move this up a little bit. And then you're going to slide your compass point up to this point and draw the same size arc. And I'm going to have, well, I might not have a problem. Nope. If your arc didn't cross your line, your transversal, so if it was past it, you'd have to extend your transversal. So is everyone with me there? Now to copy this angle down below, I'll switch to a different color, you need to measure the width of it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put my compass point here and pencil here to measure the width. And to show that you measure the width, you make an X. You're going to slide right there in red. You're going to slide your compass point up to its respective spot. So the compass point right now is not on the vertex. It's at the arc just past the vertex. So you're going to take your compass point and slide it up, not to the vertex, right? But to the arc. And I need to move it. And you make that mark. So I'm going to slide it back down, and this is what you should have. Do you have that? To finish, we just said I had to go through point P, so here's the other point that you need to draw your line. So line up your ruler. And I'm just going to sketch it. You're going to draw your line. And you need to label it because it said to construct CD. So you just need to put a C and a D.